Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I got another update for you on the Evo Coupe. Uh, some parts arrived today. Lots and lots of goodies here. So this is pretty exciting. Um, got my cylinder head and intake manifold uh, from Kurt Brown. Um, I sent these to him about a week ago. Uh, it didn't really take that long for him to get them all done. Actually, I was pretty impressed with the turnaround time. Uh, first, start with the manifold here. Um, just the little touches, a C and the B for Kurt Brown Racing. Um, he uh, took care of port matching this a little bit better and polishing it up a little bit. You don't want to polish these too much uh, so that you get the uh, uh, turbulence, mixed air in the fuel. But <clears throat> polished that up and then I went ahead and mounted my throttle body on here but welded a 70 millimeter flange on here by hand and kind of hogged out this a little bit to increase the plenum volume a bit and uh, yeah it turns out really really nice cleaned it up for me and uh, yeah it looks great he uh, I asked him about the manifold a little bit uh, because this is the Japanese Evo 4 manifold obviously uh, to see if it was any different from the Evo 8 manifold and he checked and sure enough it actually is different there's uh uh, no provisions on this manifold uh, for the map sensor, and there's um, also no um, uh, EGR. There's no EGR on this manifold, and uh, this manifold is actually quite a bit lighter too. Uh, he said it. Uh, he ended up weighing it and comparing it to a bare Evo 8 manifold, and he said this the Japanese manifold was two pounds lighter. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then he's kind of known to joke around a little bit. I'll let you see inside here. Um, let's see if we can get some light. Uh, kind of hard to see. Yeah, you can kind of see it in a little bit there. There's a smiley face on the freeze plug. But yeah, uh, you can see it, uh, kind of see. There we go. Cleaned up pretty nicely. Lots, lots of uh, extra plenum volume there. Sorry, you can't see it too well. You can kind of see it a bit. So, yeah, that's the intake manifold, and that turned out really nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm getting excited about putting that on the car. So I'll put some of the hardware that I took off back on it here uh, tonight and get that the rest of the way together. I haven't actually tightened this down yet. I'll probably take care of that tonight as well. But um, yeah, so that's the intake manifold. Now onto the head. This is a really, really nice little nice piece here. Um, <clears throat> cleaned everything up here real nice, knife edged, everything. Um, it's got stainless steel valves in it. I think they were Kigley's. I'd have to check to make sure. Um, not oversized. I went ahead and kept the stock size valves in it. Uh, just for now. I don't think it'll be a restriction at the power the power level I'm running and it just seemed I don't know, it seemed a little bit extra work that I didn't want to mess with. Uh, and uh, I didn't need really need to spend the extra cash on it so since these flow pretty well anyway so uh, stock size valves but they're, they're upgraded valves uh, Kigley Beehive Springs with titanium retainers um, bronze valve guides uh, everything was cleaned up really, really nicely. Uh, turn this head around here. You can see we're stamped Kurt Brown number 319 on the head. So this is a officially a Kurt Brown head now instead of just a normal 4G63 head. Yeah, everything looks pretty good in there. If the camera will focus well. Doesn't look like it really wants to, but yeah, everything turned out really nice. Um, flip this up on its side and spin it around. Let's see here. Be careful, it's hard to do this with just one hand. <clears throat> of course, resurfaced everything. Uh, three angle valve job and. Polished everything up really nicely. Look at that. That looks awesome. It's going to make some power, that's for sure. 
So yeah, um, talk to my neighbor. Uh, my next door neighbor is Larry Dixon Sr., which is pretty cool how that worked out. Um, if you don't know who that is, uh, you can look up Larry Dixon Jr. Uh, he drives for Top Fuel, and uh, his dad also uh, is a former drag racer, and he actually runs a shop. Um, and he's agreed to help me do the assembly on the engine next Saturday. So hopefully we'll get the bottom end put together uh, if I have all the parts I need, which, who knows, um, there's a lot of things that I have to try to keep track of. So if I missed something, then it'll take a little bit longer, but I think I more or less have everything that I need to get the bottom end together, and then we can bolt this head on, and then I can reassemble it. So I've got my uh, rockers um, that are soaking right now, and have been for the last two weeks. So once I get the rockers back, then I can check those and make sure they're all still good. And I think they will be. And then I'll put put the, uh, once I get the cylinder head on, I'll put everything together and button it up. And it'll be ready to make some power. But that's not all that came in. So you also got, ooh, these things are really ready to make some power. <clears throat> Manley's Turbo Tough I-Beam Rods. And Weiss Coast 1400 HD Pistons. That is a killer combination. This is a beefy rod, at least for a four cylinder. if it'll focus taking this video on a galaxy s5 and that's what i've been taking video on since it lets me upload to youtube directly so sorry if my videos aren't the clearest but uh when you're buying all these engine parts you can't really afford a really great camera <laughs> so this is kind of how it goes but yeah so there's one of the rods put this back in here So difficult to do with one hand while trying to film. And here is the piston kit. So we got rings, another ring. I'm really not sure why they didn't package this ring with the rest of them. If one of you guys knows, feel free to chime in on that. But uh, yeah, here's the piston. Got the clips to hold the, <clears throat> the pin in once I get the pistons assembled with the rods and there's one of the pistons look at that so shiny probably won't be that way for long <laughs> but yeah these are kind of different too I mean I, this is for rings here uh, the oil rings and this is a ceiling ring, and this is a ceiling ring, but I'm really not sure what this extra groove is for. So if one of you guys knows, uh, definitely definitely comment and let me know on that one too. Um, so I'm not... This is my first actual engine build. Um, fairly familiar with uh, how, the, how everything goes together and works. Um, but I've never dealt with anything on this level before, so this is my first high horsepower build. So don't know everything there is to know. Not afraid to admit it, but uh, yeah, I'm learning. So this is a, this has been a fun project so far. But anyway, so that's the update for now. Um, getting exciting, guys. Uh, hopefully, I'm I'm really hoping to have this whole engine together and in the car um, by May 22nd, which is my birthday. So if I can make that, I will be really really happy. Um, I bought the, actually the original turbo from the half cut I bought back, uh, the TDO5. It's got a little bit of shaft play, but it's not really anything to worry about, I don't think. It's not, I mean, the, the compressor is not touching the sides, so it's just barely got some shaft play. Um, I'm planning on using that turbo to break in the new motor, and then this winter uh, I'll put the big 6262 on, which if I haven't showed it, this room's a bit of a mess because I do some computer work in here. But I've got a Precision 6262 
uh, on an eBay manifold that was free, so I'm not complaining. And this is gonna be the big turbo for the car. This is 6262, it's got a billet compressor wheel and the anti-surge housing. It's also got uh, the uh, dual ceramic ball bearing option. And I uh, picked it up for a pretty good price. AMS oil oil line. But um, yeah, so this will be the, the final turbo uh, once I get the engine and everything done. I would put this turbo on the car right away, but I don't want to use this manifold. It's been cracked and then re-welded. And uh, I've got a tile 38 millimeter wastegate, but I really want to go V-band. This uses a flange. So I uh, get a new, uh, new manifold with a new wastegate that's got a V-band flange. Uh, need to get a screamer pipe made. I need intercooler pipes since I can't use Evo 8 or 9 stuff. Uh, it's a lot different. I actually, one of, my, one of my friends actually gave me a set of Evo, uh, Evo 8 intercooler pipes and an Evo 8 intercooler so I could check them out. And they actually do not fit the Mirage. Uh, or the Evo 4 for that matter. They're they're a lot different. So unfortunately that won't work, but um, So I have to get custom intercooler pipes. I have to get an intercooler uh, A lot of stuff and a lot of cash that I just don't have the cash flow to, to do all up front So I'll uh, I'll take care of that uh, After the engines uh, built and broke in and running uh, I'll need a new clutch to to handle the amount of power that that'll make but uh, it's, we're well on the way. <sighs> Farther than I was, anyway. Even with the stock turbo, this will make more than three times what I've, what I've been uh, living with with that car. So it's going to be exciting. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully within another month it'll be in the car. And within two months I'm hoping to have it running. So yeah, stay tuned. And I'll see you guys next time.